So uh, our next speaker, Shinji Muneto from uh, Kyosu University. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, Monte Carlo simulation. This one? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, my, my name is uh, Muneto from Kyushu University. Uh, Today, I would like to talk about the molecular dynamic simulation of the ductal fracture. Uh, to tell the truth, uh, my, uh, I'm not in research field of steel. My research field is a computational science of semiconductor. So uh, this conference is an adv uh, adventure for me. So uh, today, uh, please go easy on me. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning, I would like to show the outline of the, my presentation. Uh, I would like to start with the introduction, and then I will talk about the method of the molecular dynamic simulation. And then I will talk about the results and the discussions. Uh, results uh, uh, consist of two calculations. Uh, one, of the, one is the MD simulation for ductal fracture of the single crystal of pure iron. And then uh, I will talk about the polycrystal. And finally, I will conclude my presentation. Uh, today, I uh, would like to focus on the where and when uh, the void was generated uh, during the ductile uh, tensile test. Here, I will talk about the process of the ductile fracture. At first, uh, we apply the stress in the sample uh, along the, these directions. And the sample, was, uh, uh, sample is uh, uh, stretched by the tensile stress, and some voids uh, are generated at the earlier stage. And then uh, the voids are uh, grown by the tensile stress, and finally the sample was broken off. And uh, many, researcher, uh, many researchers are trying to the uh, investigation uh, of uh, uh, generation of voids for tensile test, uh, but uh, it's uh, difficult to directly observe the process for the generation of the, of the voids in the atomic scale. So in this study, we use the MD simulation for the ductal fracture of pure iron. Uh, molecular dynamic simulation is a powerful tool for the uh, analyzing the uh, crystallization process in the atomic scale. For example, uh, previously, we uh, invested the crystallization process of the uh, liquid silicon uh, based on the MD simulations. At the initial stage, uh, this region is a uh, seed crystal, and this region is a liquid silicon. And uh, the MD cell was kept under the melting point. And, uh, solid liquid interface uh, gradually uh, moves down with time, and uh, we can observe the crystallization. This crystallization uh, epitaxially progressed the, from the seed crystal. And finally, we can observe the uh, defect, uh, defect formation. And this defect uh, can be also observed in the experiment, and we report the uh, mechanism of the formation process of this defect uh, previously. And to, in this study, we use the MD simulation uh, for ductal fracture pure iron and investigate the uh, generation of voids uh, during the tensile test. Here, I would, like, uh, uh, I would like to explain the method of the molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, by using the molecular dynamic simulation, uh, we can uh, directly observe the motion of the atoms. At first, uh, we set the initial condition, such as the structure and the temperature and the tensile rate and so on. And then, uh, atomic force is calculated by interatomic potential. Interatomic potential is a function uh, which describes the interaction of atoms. And then, uh, position of atoms were calculated by solving equation of motion. And these procedures uh, are repeated again and again 
in the MD simulation. Depends on the MD simulation, uh, typically uh, these procedures are repeated uh, 100 million times by supercomputer. And uh, important point is if we set the initial conditions, the MD simulation progresses uh, without any artificial operations. In this study, we performed the two MD simulation for uh, pure iron. Uh, first is a uh, single crystal. Uh, this is an ideal condition. And uh, uh, in order to investigate the generation voice, uh, we use the MD, single, MD, uh, single crystalline MD cell, including the vacancies. And next is uh, uh, in order to uh, approach to more realistic model, and we perform the uh, polycrystal silicon MD, uh, sim, uh, MD simulations. Of course, uh, the polycrystal MD cell includes a grain boundary. Here, I will talk about the MD simulation of the single crystal of pure iron, uh, including vacancies. Uh, MD cell size and number of atoms are here. And my presentation title is uh, Boys and 30,000 atoms, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I use uh, 85,000 atoms. <laughs> And uh, this uh, simulation cell size is very, very small in the experiment. But uh, current computer is very powerful. But the MD simulation is, uh, needs uh, much, uh, much uh, number of the calculations. So uh, limitation of the number of atoms of MD simulation is around 100,000 atoms. So this MD cell is relatively large in the uh, field of the MD simulation. And in order to realize, uh, uh, in order to uh, avoid, uh, avoid the surface effect, uh, we perform, uh, we apply the uh, uh, periodic boundary condition for x and y and z directions. By, is, by using periodic boundary conditions, uh, we can uh, calculate the bulk status. And uh, we use the FS potential as an interatomic potential. Uh, it's very widely known. Uh, this potential is we uh, can well reproduce the uh, properties of the ion. And uh, in this simulation, we set the two vacancies in the MD cell. And uh, uh, the MD cell was stretched by uh, stress in uh, with a tensile rate of five meter per second along these directions. This is a snapshot of the MD simulation of single crystal, and these figures are uh, cross sections uh, of MD cell from the internal part of the of thickness uh, with thickness of single uh, six ohmstrom. And the initial stage, we can observe the uh, vacancies. And the MD cell was stretched little by little, and some disordered area can be observed uh, because of generation of dislocations. And, uh, and uh, strain of, uh, at the strain of 0 0.13, uh, a void was generated uh, from this point. And the void uh, was grown by uh, tensile stress. And finally, the MD cell was broken off. And it should be noted that uh, the uh, void was not generated from the vacancies. And, but uh, from these figures, uh, we cannot observe the uh, generation point of voids clearly. So, I use uh, uh, numerical operations. This is a MD, uh, previous MD cell, and uh, around 85 atoms in this MD cell. Uh, so we cannot see the internal part of the MD cell. So, but we perform the MD simulation uh, by using an interatomic potential. Interatomic potential uh, can express the stability of the uh, atoms. So we can distinguish the 
unstable atoms by uh, interatomic potential energy. So in this figure, uh, only unstable atoms are shown in the MD cell uh, by energy value. So we can clearly observe the uh, dislocation cores. Uh, this is a previous uh, uh, figure. And these figures, uh, uh, only unstable atoms in the MD cell are shown. At the initial stage, uh, we can observe the some atoms near the vacancies uh, because uh, near, uh, the atoms near vacancies is a little bit unstable uh, than the uh, perfect crystal. And uh, uh, at the strain of 0.1, uh, some dislocations can be observed. And these two dislocations uh, tangled, with, tangled with each other. And uh, at uh, 0.13, uh, a void was generated from this point tangled with uh, dislocations. And the void, uh, gro uh, the void was grown by sto uh, stress and uh, the sample was broken off. And in this figure, many, many atoms were shown uh, because uh, the atoms on the fracture, su fracture surface is unstable. By using the MD simulation, uh, we can calculate the uh, strain stress curve uh, by, uh, being by atomic force. Uh, this figure shows a stress strain curve, but a little bit noisy because, of, uh, because uh, the atomic force is uh, very sensitive to the position of atoms. So, uh, and we can, uh, observe, uh, we can estimate the energy profile of the, uh, by interatomic potential, and the po potential value is relatively non sensitive to the position of atoms. So, we can we can see the clear curve. And elastic region, uh, the potential curve draws a parabolic line, parabolic curve. And this is a yield point. And uh, if uh, stress is a constant, uh, the, uh, the uh, energy profile uh, is uh, proportional to the uh, strain. Uh, generation point, generation of void is here, and we can see the void was generated uh, between yield point and fracture. Next, I will talk about the MD simulation of polycrystal. And just a mistake, <laughs> this is a poly polycrystal. I, from here, I will talk about the polycrystal. MD cell size is uh, here, and the periodic boundary condition and FS potential were also applied. And uh, MD, uh, we use, uh, uh, M, uh, we use uh, in, this M, in this simulation, uh, polycrystalline uh, MD cell uh, was used. And uh, at first, we prepare the, an empty MD cell and some uh, grains uh, with uh, various, orient, uh, various crystal orientation was embedded to the uh, empty MD cell. And, uh, uh, Finally, uh, in order to the remove the stress of the, uh, on the grain boundary, uh, the MD cell was uh, relaxed by the annealing. And then uh, the MD cell was stretched uh, with tensile speed uh, of 5 meters per second along these directions. This figure shows the snapshots of the uh, polycrystal. And these figures are uh, cross-sections of MD cell from the internal part of, with thickness of uh, six angstroms. At a strain of uh, 0.07, a void was generated from uh, grain boundaries. And uh, at the void was uh, uh, grown by tensile uh, stress. And finally, uh, the MD cell was broken off. And it should be noticed that uh, before the uh, generation of voids, uh, many dislocations were induced in the grain. 
But uh, according to previous simulation of single crystal, uh, there is a possibility of the generation of voids from the internal part of the uh, grain. But uh, a void, this void, uh, was generated from the grain boundary uh, more quick. This is an ex uh, experimental result of, of EBSD. And this sample is a pure ion. And uh, this figure was obtained from a part near the uh, fracture surface. And uh, this color, this color shows the uh, uh, crystal orientation. And we can observe the uh, void uh, is on the uh, grain boundaries. Uh, although the size is very different uh, from the computer simulation, but uh, uh, it suggests that uh, simulation results is a good agreement with the experimental results. At last, I would like to show the uh, comparison of the two MD simulations, uh, polycrystal and single crystals. And the figure shows the energy profile of two MD simulations, and delta E shows the uh, given energy from the initial conditions. And uh, 0 0.16 and 0 0.06 electron volt uh, shows the uh, uh, given energy for, the, uh, for fracture. And uh, these uh, uh, energy uh, uh, correspond to the upper shelf energy of the shell, uh, Sharpie impact test. On our, uh, on our uh, results, uh, suggest uh, the upper shelf energy of polycrystal sample is smaller than the single crystal. Professor Takaki uh, reported the uh, change in the upper shelf energy as a function of the grain size. And uh, according to these uh, results, uh, upper shelf energy uh, degrees with the decrease of the grain size. And uh, this uh, tendency is uh, agreement with our simulation results. And uh, one of the reasons of the, this decrease uh, is maybe the, uh, due to the grain boundary density. But uh, our results are just two calculations. So more detailed uh, simulations or more uh, experimental investigation are needed, I think. So let me summarize my talk. Uh, we have performed the MD simulation of ductal fracture of pure iron. And uh, in the case of the single crystal, a void was generated from the position of uh, tangled with the dislocations. And uh, in the case of the polycrystal, a void was generated from the grain boundary. And given energy of the polycrystal uh, MD simulation uh, is lower than the that of uh, single crystal, so it suggests that uh, upper, uh, the upper shelf energy, uh, uh, one of the reasons of the decrease of the upper shelf energy may be due to the grain boundary density. Thank you. Thank you for a very uh, uh, excellent lecture. Um, I wonder if um, in your polycrystalline simulations, it, if you uh, could vary the character of the grain boundary, because you know there is different types of grain boundaries, uh, depending on the crystal structure, crystal orientation, and the, the grain boundary plane. Did you look for a specific configuration? Yeah. Uh I, in the, my presentation, I didn't talk about the pre preparing the, this MD cell. And uh, uh, this, this crystal orientation is uh, quite random. So uh, I cannot uh, calculate the realistic model, I think. So more. Uh, detailed simulation or more realistic model of simulation is needed, I think. So according to what criterion did you select your 
crystal orientations? Just random pick? Or Just random. Hi, thanks. That was that was very interesting and different. Um, I have a question about the stress strain curve that you showed for this. I think it was a single crystal. Um, Solid strain curve. Yes. Yeah, so single um, crystal. Yeah, that one. one. Um, so I'm not sure I understand why there's such a discontinuity at 10% strain because it seems to it looks like the kind of shape you might get at yielding due to the Cottrell atmospheres and the carbon and the dislocations. Um, but obviously here you don't have any carbon, so I wondered what was the reason for that shape. You, you mean uh, this part? Yeah, it this sort of, it sort of part? peaks and then drops mm. down again, so I'm not and sure that's uh, a fact or if there's a physical explanation. My, my estimation is a very small size, so, and uh, the dislocation source is nothing. So <coughs> if the MD cell was induced the dislocations, uh, quickly removes the uh, stress, atomic force. So quickly down the uh, stress, but the uh, work, uh, work hardness, hardening is uh, working in this area. Mm -hmm. So quickly uh, up as uh, uh, the stress. Okay, all right, Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, can, uh, can I know that the green size uh, of your simulation? Um, in the poly polycrystal, poly poly yeah. and uh, very, very small, five, uh, 50 angstroms. <laughs> so fi size is uh, more different from the experimental result. So uh, I need a more computer power of supercomputer. I, am, I, I do research on the solid state bonding and diffusion bonding and so on. So I wonder, is it possible to use your simulation on a reverse process? For instance, imagine we put two pieces of metal together, we have a void, and then apply compressive stress, and yes. then try mm. to simulate how long it takes to get rid of the voids. That will be very much of interest. Mm. Uh, you mean the diffusion? Diffusion uh, bonding, or let's uh, say heaping, uh, to in order to close the voids. I just wonder whether simulation is capable of to reverse calculation. Depends on time. And uh, for example, this is a, a previous uh, my study, and uh, the simulation simulated time is uh, around four nanoseconds, but uh, this time it's very very short. But uh, uh, supercomputer uh, works uh, this simulation around uh, three weeks. So if your diffusion is uh, finished uh, up to this time, <laughs> you, can, you can calculate the phenomena, but the, mm, more computer power is needed, I think. Thank you. Real, real crystals always contain defects. How sensitive is the simulation results on the initial defects, and are they randomly introduced in the crystal? Mm. How do you uh, actually uh. take I it? only try to the one MD simulation of the vacancy, but the, uh, some defect is uh, I didn't perform. So, so, you know, just uh, extra going on from Deborah's question, uh, Obviously, you know, you know what you're doing with molecular dynamics, but your comparison with the experimental data is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the energy to form a void is mm. not the upper shelf energy. Mm. It's all the linking up of many different voids mm. and the plastic deformation that follows mm. afterwards. So. I know. This is a difficult disease of modeling people. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, uh, a little bit in defense or whatever, uh, or, sorry, or sorry. Further, further, further to, to, to talking about. Uh, uh, molecular dynamics is a powerful tool, but uh, you use classical potentials. Mm. Uh, uh, how do you verify the applicability and the transferability of your potentials and uh, that you can use them for this particular problem? Uh, you mean the uh, other element 
or no, no, other not e even for this particular problem. So what are verification tools that you uh, use to justify that your potential describe your systems accurately? Mm, of course, I, I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and molecular dynamics, uh, the key point is uh, uh, intermediate potential. Intermediate potential is very important, I think. OK, I got, uh, I got a question. Um, in your single crystal simulation, uh, you showed the generation of two uh, dislocations. Um, is that uh, checked against, um, uh, for instance, classical um, Schmidt factor? A uh, slip plane uh, deformation theory check against that, or for, for a single uh, BCC crystal. This is a BCC crystal. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, and uh, Schmidt factor. Schmidt factor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we got a question from. Uh, yeah, it's from Tata Steel Netherlands. It's about similar question. It's asking the. Uh, What's the orientation of your single crystal relative to tensile uh, stress? Uh, just a, just a zero zero one zero zero one zero zero one. It's not a question. Are you sure those are dislocations? Have you measured the Burgers vector? <laughs> Sorry. Are you sure that these line, yeah. these linear features? Are you quite sure that they are dislocations? Have you measured the Burgers vector? I exactly, I don't know, but uh, uh, this line shows a uh, uh, dislocation core, and uh, the dislocation is edgy, edgy dislocation. Mm. Okay, uh, I guess we thank the company. Thank you. Thank you.